Australian Securities and Investment Commission. This is just the beginning, you know. I'm sure the, a lot of builders are doing it tough. Jack Arn, Nine News. It's costing WA taxpayers $19.5 million to bail out Collie coal miner Griffin. Deputy Premier Roger Cook revealing the figure as Parliament returns today. The WA government says it's ensuring the state has a secure electricity supply in summer and that it's the government's intention to recover the costs through mining revenue. High-powered and long-range firearms will be outlawed in WA. Comes after police uncovered an illegal underground bunker in High Wycombe. The state government will ban 56 types of firearms from July 1, a move slammed by the state's peak firearm body. And there's been no evidence in Western Australia that any of these types of firearms or the calibres have been used in criminal activity in Western Australia. Around 200 of the licensed firearms exist in WA, with the state government to buy back the weapons, costing taxpayers $1.5 million. New Zealand has declared a national state of emergency for only the third time in its history. Cyclone Gabrielle has brought widespread flooding, cut off towns and triggered landslides. Hawke's Bay, east coast on the North Island, Cyclone Gabriel smashing into homes. North at Gisborne, time-lapse capturing the surging floodwaters. Less than 24 hours, rivers were bursting and breaking up bridges. Oh, watch your feet, mate. Their bridges go. And here, washing them away. 250,000 Kiwis on the North Island are without power. Towns are isolated and can't be reached by road. No wonder early this morning the emergency minister was forced to act. Declared a national state of emergency. This is a significant disaster with a real threat to the lives of New Zealanders. Landslips are proving deadly. Two firemen were caught when a cliff face crushed a house outside of Auckland. One is still missing, the other is critical. And just south of there, a mountain of mud slammed into another house. The family inside running for their lives. We ran down the steps and the steps were separating and it was like a movie where the house slides down behind you and you're running for your life. So we all three of us got it. We all three got out safely and we're safe, but we have lost our home. Country roads have turned into dangerous craters. The devastation is just... Oh, it just makes you, makes you want to cry. So many communities are stranded. Tore a hole in the roof. It's just total devastation. This satellite image shows how intense the cyclone has been over the entire North Island. A whitewash. That's not over yet. Mark Burrows, Nine News. Much of New Zealand's North Island is without power this evening. Laravella is north of Auckland following this report a short time ago. At the peak of this cyclone, almost a million homes were left without power and as floodwaters slowly start to recede surrounding parts of Auckland and the system is now tracking southeast, which is some good news. The issue moving forward for emergency crews is going to be access with landslides splitting major roads into parts. It means some communities throughout New Zealand will be left without power for days, if not weeks. Tonight, travellers at Auckland Airport are being asked to either go home or stay home with both domestic and international flights grounded due to strong wind gusts. A fire which destroyed the Kukulis Brothers warehouse in Northbridge is now out. Crews stayed at the Wellman Street site throughout the morning to put out any hot spots. Cause of the fire believed to be from hot oil in the warehouse kitchen. An independent audit has been launched into Alcoa's footprint on WA's Jarrah Forest. The review's already been labelled worrying, but the company insists it's proud of its rehabilitation efforts. For 60 years, Alcoa has promised to replace the ecosystems it destroys as it strip mines bauxite from WA's Jarrah Forest. Now that commitment to conservation is under the microscope in a new audit. It's very stark and our indications are that the forest is struggling. Satellite images show Alcoa's impact in the last decade alone, the company's fingerprints visible from space and from the ground. I'm exceptionally proud of the products that we make, the way we go about making it, and the hard work of the employees that help make that happen. And what about the damage left behind? Again, I'm also proud of the rehabilitation work that we've done.
The Australian Research Council's Centre for Mindsite Restoration is auditing Alcoa's rehabilitation record on the back of new global guidelines. We're seeing some worrying trends. We're not seeing the Jarrah Forest reinstated. Professor Kingsley Dixon says the company hasn't been forthcoming with its data. He's applied for it under freedom of information laws. Alcoa is adamant it's being transparent, but says it simply wasn't given enough time to produce six decades worth of data. We're proud of the work that we've done um, and uh, we are not always perfect and that's why we seek continuous improvement. Look, I've had no advice uh, that uh, they have not met uh, the appropriate standards over the 60 or 70 years. The audit's findings are expected in May. Michael Genovese, Nine News. The Eagles say they have dodged a bullet after receiving the scan results of Jack Darling's ankle injury and Matthew Pavlich. It's good news for the key forward. Uh, sure is, Tommy. Yes, after fearing the worst, the key forward has avoided surgery. West Coast taking their time to understand the full extent of the injury and the best course of action. Darling not expected to make an appearance in both upcoming pre-season matches. I don't think it's too severe. He'll be touch and go for round one, but knowing the way he is, I think he might be OK. Simpson saying he'll try different options in attack when they take on Port and the Crows in the coming weeks. Round one, now only 32 days away. Tommy, it's fast approaching the season, isn't it? And ahead of sport, Justin Longmuir opens up about his thoughts on the Frio captaincy. Looking forward to hearing that. Yep, love the footy. Looking Tomo. forward to the start of the season too. <laughs> Matthew, thank you. February 14 is a day for love, and as divorce rates continue to climb in WA, the secret to a happy marriage is much sought after. These couples have some tips. It's a day dedicated to love. Cheers. And across Perth, there was plenty of it in the air. How long have you been married for? Oh, God. Two, two, two years. years. Two, yeah, yeah I know, it's still going And strong. counting? And yeah, counting, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Their top tip for four decades of wedded bliss? Uh, have separate interests. And most importantly... Happy wife, happy life. David and Tracy Silber are about to celebrate their 30th wedding anniversary. Always putting Always. the other person first. Always say yes, dear. Mm. <laughs> but for many others, a simple gesture is a good place to start. Florists preparing for their single biggest day of the year for months now. We've got to make sure that we've got enough products and enough flowers that we can provide right up to the last minute. But sales this year are looking a little different. Many moving away from the traditional red rose, instead opting for something bright and colourful like this. And for those perhaps still waiting for that special someone, here is something to remember. There's no shame in being alone. And in fact, there's many people out there who are flying solo for a variety of reasons. Either they're, they're separated, uh, they haven't found the one, or in lots of cases, people are out there actually just choosing to be by themselves. Kelly Haywood, Nine News. Shirley Biggs is live from City Beach this evening where there are plenty of people enjoying a very romantic afternoon. Ah, the day of love, Tomo, and we scored a perfect day of weather for it. We've got plenty of couples here situated on the grassy banks of City Beach waiting for the sun to set, which will happen in just under an hour. Now, it was much cooler today. We only reached a top of 25.8 degrees, which is 11 degrees cooler than it was yesterday. A cold front which clipped the south of the state will bring some cool and cloudy conditions to Perth for the next couple of days. There is a little bit of a cool breeze down here at City Beach. So if you are coming down to join us, make sure that you do put a light layer on. But it should be a wonderful evening and a spectacular sunset. Tomo, I'll have the rest of the forecast coming up soon. It looks fantastic down there. Sherry, thank you. We are live to Turkey next as Australian responders arrive in the quake hit region. A parking spat in the city of Perth. The tragic death of an Australian boy in Fiji while on holiday. A deadly truck rampage in the US and still to come, tips to stretch your international dollar further on holidays. The elite athlete whose Olympic dream became a nightmare. Everything came crumbling down. Exposing a toxic culture in the AIS. A current affair tonight. <laughs> Being intimate is going to nourish their relationship. Australia, it's Valentine's Day. <laughs> ten second hug? No, 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 I'm, I'm good. Not even a ten second hug? No. This is so cute. The experiment Karma Sutra. puts desire <laughs> to the test. 
my heart, my actual heart. Come here, you. Into the 